Good evening. Hi. Da, 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 da. Good evening. <laughs> Welcome the to the stream? session. Sorry. Live stream the yeah. sharing and all that stuff. I'll do the sharing first. We go to chapter 15 in a bit, but just for the recording, so it's there live. Okay. Atma Namaste, Sumi and Amit and everyone. <laughs> yes, Atma. Shall I ask you one question? Sure. Sure. Okay. In last topic, we have discussed about the atomic web. And here they have said they have uh, said there is that uh, there is a layer between the etheric and the astral uh, plane, right? Yeah. Do we have uh, such atomic waves in between each and every plane? In between, uh, but we have not mean, spoken about that the. That means other if it is astral, uh, etheric, astral, astral, mental sort of. That will come the mental body book. And the astral book. In the astral body. <laughs> okay, that means there, is, uh, there are... Uh, it, kind of, it doesn't mean that it's there. We didn't say it's there. But we said the yeah, internet. webs. A kind of web. Right? Yes. And again, because the second question was related to that only. Because when we are in sleep, we do we get dreams. We say uh, we are traveling uh, astral uh, planes and we get that dreams. And when, how do we correlate these things with our insights and intuition? Your insights and intuitions don't necessarily uh, occur because you had a dream. Yes, they can happen even in your waking consciousness. It's not only in your sleep state that you have uh, intuition or uh, the ability to, to sense that, you know, you need to take a certain direction in your life or, or choose uh, a certain thing over another. These things purely happen because you need, uh, sorry, uh, because there is guidance from your higher soul and your crown has been activated to enhance uh, partial intuition, if, if not. Yeah. Yes. But uh, you see, if it comes, uh, once I think, as far as I remember the answer, one of the answers to this, when we ask Master Chua, how do we know whether something is our imagination or it is you know, like, intuition you know so he says if it um, comes gradually in your consciousness you know it's like forming or it just comes gradually as an image that is most likely your imagination your desire your whatever but if it just comes like that you have no idea where it came from usually that exactly is. absolutely because what happens something uh, sometimes what we do uh, we are working something and suddenly something comes in front of us usually that's usually that's intuition yeah it, it, it's uh, really quick uh, unless it's someone else's thought form. <laughs> 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 which means it, another faculty is opening up okay yes thank you so much yeah. Yeah. so uh, the other day someone yeah. was talking about uh, sutra sutra something like that correct oh, yeah. Saucha. He has noted down also. Yes. Huh. Saucha, um, Saucha is basically purification. And yes. It's basically yes. just like Arhatic Yoga. Uh, yes. Inner, inner purification and outer purification. Mm. Uh, but the rest of the Yama Niyamas is quite detailed. But the, the one that was asked is the obvious one, which is purification. Uh, when we ask Master Choi, he says that's just arhatic, what we talk about, uh, mental purification, emotional purification, uh, etheric purification, and physical purification. So, yes. Uh, I, even I was about to tell you that. Actually, it is sucha. The correct pronunciation is sucha because ah. it is a Punjabi word. Ah, okay. So, so in sucha, we say when we are offering something to God, it has to be sucha. Sucha is pure. All right. So, pure to purify yourself is one of the niyama as the master has also told, like, you need to purify yourself yeah. at all yeah. levels. So, uh, that is a niyama. And niyama is to not to do something that he has already mentioned as karma would uh, come back hundred of times, like, as you... Actually, yama, I think, is not to do something. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yang so... Uh, I was about to tell you that that sucha is it is sucha correct pronunciation it is to become pure. Okay, thank you. Yes, 
to become pure. The question is, how do you become pure? <laughs> so that is the entire... <laughs> yes. So that is the pillar two of Arhatic Yoga, for those of you who have done it. Or the Achieving Oneness with the Higher Soul book talks a lot about it, physical and inner purification both. And um, the question is, the other Yama Niyamas are not very uh, direct. Even this one, if you did not know about inner purification, I don't think I would have connected it. Yeah. And if I did not know certain other, uh, you know, I would have just thought it's purity, you know, you have to have pure thoughts. I would not talk connected with character building, the development of the light, love and power aspect for more voltage to come through. And there's a certain sequence. Why is this first? Why is this second? Why is this third? Why is this fourth? Why is this first? So, so and also, um, for example, contentment. What does that mean, contentment? After socha is, I think, contentment. I do not remember the... Um, Sanskrit word. Whatever words, because not important for me. The meaning is more important. Um, so the, the contentment, for example, what does that mean? Does that mean you're supposed to be contented with everything you have? Then uh, is ambition wrong? So if your ambition is to become better at study, uh, you shouldn't be because you should be contented. <laughs> so, so it is much more detailed. Uh, that goes into healthy self-interest, unhealthy self-interest. So you can actually understand the whole Yama Niyama through the teachings of Master Choa and also through inner uh, teachings as well. But that is not the purpose of this session. The purpose is to do ether double. So let's continue. All with right. That. Let's uh, start up with an invocation yes, uh, since we have quite a few people here already. Uh, let's close our eyes, connect onto the palette. Let's remember why we're all gathered here and ask for appropriate blessings to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. We humbly ask for your great, great blessings. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Cho Coxwilot Maha Guruji Mele. To all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, especially to all the great teachers, masters, and beings of theosophy, the great beings of knowledge, wisdom, and light. To all the beings present here, to our soul and divine self, to the angels and beings of communication, of the internet and our respective Wi-Fi's, we humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your knowledge, for your wisdom, for greater, clearer, deeper understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to assimilate it, to put it in perspective with reference to all that we've learned, so we may become better instruments to take your teachings ahead and to help spread your light all around us. We thank you for humbly accepting us as instruments to do your work. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. We thank you with gratitude, with deep respect and much love. We thank you. Thank you. Atma Namaste. So to move on, um, I'm going to first mute everyone. You can go ahead. Uh, what was I going to talk about? Last chapter. We're just going to end with those last two paragraphs of the last chapter. You finished it, right? You finished talking about it. I think uh, yes, I also you, finished talking No, about no, it. you haven't. You had a lot. So you said you wanted to do it today. So I'm going to open that up. for you. Beside <laughs> Saucha, as you said, <laughs> other than that, there was some other stuff that you wanted to share. Uh, do you, I forgot. Sonia, we'll get your question a little later. Yes, yeah. Yes. I've explained this, right? The only safe way there were for the genuine is to wait for this to inform. I'm trying to get the other one for this. What how much I spoke? This is not it. Yeah, I know. Okay. No, I was escaping. Okay. I I I honestly don't know <laughs> what I was going to say that day. It's coming as a blank now. Uh did I explain the whole thing already? Did I explain this last paragraph for you? No, you had these these no, I finished to say, say I part this. of it. You had a lot of points you said. But no, the whole, a lot of points was about the etheric web. Yeah, so that didn't come through. But yet. that's not here. So as he purifies the he becomes able to function the atomic matter. He will carry his consciousness along the direct road. Okay, as the consciousness. Yeah, so we're going to as go to. the consciousness to... of the ordinary man. I don't need to share it yet. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, all right. We'll share one one aspect um, very quickly. Let me see because honestly, so um, I think we we spoke to about this. We spoke about this. I remember that. And then, um, all right. We spoke about this, didn't we? Yeah, with no special yes. training. Me. He is likely to have an unpleasant experience. Unpleasant experiences, um, very mildly put. Yeah, we spoke about all this. Ah, I don't know whether we spoke about this. When you're healing, the elementals cannot enter your body since you have protective webs. Therefore, there is no danger of contamination from elementals. Besides, the protective web is made in such a way that if there are any psychic intruders, it becomes automatically stronger and impenetrable. Now, I want to wrap this chapter up because it's taking too long, so I won't uh, explain you know, as much. But the question is this. When you're healing, the elementals cannot enter your body since you have protective webs. What about negative thought entities? What about negative psychic energies? That is a question. Because we know that from psychotherapy that uh, stress energy is highly contagious. I think Master has mentioned it either in the Psychic Self Defense book or in the psychotherapy book that uh, stress energy is highly uh, contagious and it can be transferred from one person to another. Sometimes when people want to release their stress energy, what they would do is they would shout and scream at someone and then, uh, sorry, just the webcam and then when you uh, react to that person the uh, the stress energy gets transferred to you so is the protective web useful the question is only for negative elementals because the the book says negative elementals it does not say protection from negative thought entities which is why you have to be careful when you're around pessimistic people and sometimes when you're around pessimistic people you feel low now the question is why We'll talk about it a little bit. Otherwise, you know, the whole day will, whole, whole session will go just discussing this. But in the inner world, we've already explained the concept that like attracts like. So if you have anger within you, you have stress energy, you are giving a portal or a link for that anger energy from outside, that stress energy from outside to come in. So it's fooling the programming of the web and it transfers through that channel because you are sending stress energy out of your body then that stress energy is coming through that channel into your body. And the body cannot discern between that. It's like, you know, viruses or whatever you want to call it, right? You are sending stress energy out of your body, right? So the stress energy is coming out as a stream outside your body. Through that stream, the stress energy will enter your body also. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, if you have certain, uh, now what is the solution to that? Be completely loving. <laughs> at, no, all times. at all times. So you have anger. So that's why uh, in the psychic self defense class, if you guys have done it or you've read the psychic self defense book, you have this technique, which is very good. You have other techniques, which is very good. But if you do this and you're angry, the energy penetrates. We experimented in one of the classes with Pastor Choa. He would make a person, uh, you see, before the psychic self defense class was like a day and a half because if you want to show, whether a particular uh, technique works, what do you have to do? You have to first scan the person's aura, then you have to see the size, then you have to have someone insult that person, <laughs> send them anger energy, check what happens to the aura, then you have to do the protective mechanism, then you have to reset, do the protective mechanism, insult again, and then you see the protection, and then uh, that's, that's when you know that it works. But the problem is there's so much negativity. If there are 100 people in the class throwing anger energy back and forth, after every workshop, we had to do namaste, we had to bless each person, say five good things about the person. It became really long. So that's why then the workshops cut short. So one time uh, we were scanning a person. We said, okay, uh, cross your hands. So obviously the aura became stronger. The anger energy did not go through for those of you who have done the sex elephants class. Uh, closing the aura technique. And the clairvoyant said it became uh, more compact and more tightly woven, the aura, right? So, but then we said, okay, then Master Chua said, okay, why don't you scan the person, the person who's crossing the hands, just think of when you're really angry and, you know, upset at one point. So he was thinking about that. The person, again, 
was trying to mentally insult the person, uh, you know, not even verbally. And the energy went in. The energy went in. Actually, I think maybe it was verbal. But the energy, uh, energy went in, the aura became smaller. Right? So, so it shows that there is protection to a certain extent from the elementals, but it does not specify negative thought entities. It's one level of truth. Okay? What else? That was one thing. Now, uh, I, I, I don't know what I was going to say about the last paragraph. I think I pitched in when you were talking. Yeah, I did. Didn't I? I finished the last paragraph. Yeah, I, I remember. Bye. By this way, the benefits will be obtained anyway. So, two questions that I want to ask. The first question is, um, what is the etheric web made of? What is the, sorry, the, the what do you call it? Chakral web made of? Um, we don't know. Here it says there are two factors. There is some prana coming in and there is something else, right? Um, now, we don't know. And the second question is, why do you have to be trained? And I explained some of this. Why do you have to be trained in order to be able to, um, the only safe way, therefore, for genuine students of occultism is not to force in any way the development of psychic powers, but to wait for these to unfold as they will unfold in normal. But it does not tell you how it unfolds. It does not tell you uh, what is happening. Uh, suddenly, all this time, they're like, be careful. You need it. You need it. You need it. And then you can unfold it. I remember seeing this. I said unfold was open. Remember, remember? Yes. See, see, I said it. I covered no, I'm not saying no. I yeah, said you, you wanted to say a whole bunch of things. Yeah, yeah, the you whole bunch of things. So number 20 minutes. No, no, I finished. Anyway, so the first thing is, <laughs> what is a chuckle map made of? No, I got confused, seriously. Then I said the word unfold and I remembered. Uh, and the second thing is, um, what is a, uh, uh, why can you not be able to uh, open it otherwise? You know, just normal people. Um, and why is it dangerous? The first thing, what is the chuckle made of? We don't know, but we can study, right? I mean, if we go into what it's made of, it's going to take time. So I'll give you studying questions. Number one, what do we know? See, by knowing the properties of something, you can assume, you can reverse engineer the process of where it comes from. You know, it's like the book, Existence of God is self-evident. By looking at the results, you can figure out the source to a certain extent, okay? Uh, at one level of truth, at least. Now, number one, we know that the chuckle web is highly reactive to violet, subtle yellow. By the way, that's not in the book, but subtle yellow it, from the crown, it really helps uh, also seal the holes. But, and the most effective is, actually not the most effective, more effective than that is electric violet. Okay. Um, this is as per Master Church teachings. For those of yes, you for those of you who've done the sex therapy book, uh, read the book. Um, so we know that it's, it's uh, receptive to these three colors. Basically, energy is from the crown, okay? It's not that receptive to lower energies. Not only higher energies, but the highest form of energy, energy from the crown, okay? Um, what does that show? So what can be assumed is that on one level, there is higher matter in it because you need higher matter to fix it, all right? Now, what else do we know? We know that the chakra is affected. Oh, I can show you on uh, the share slide. I think there's also white that can be used. Yeah, white, but it's, it's only good for new cracks, barely effective. Anyway. Ah, and this is very important. Although we have known that there are thought entities, protective web elementals, um, they were never linked. And the solution for that, Sumi also spoke about it, never linked and utilized in the field of psychological healing. Okay, Master Chua did that. Now, we also know that too much will will cause the protective web to rupture. It is very sensitive to will, energy of will or power. Okay, from inside or from outside. What else do we know? We know that the chakral web protects you from anger, anger elementals, it protects you from... What about anger thought forms? Uh, sometimes, sometimes. Is it there? Oh, no. It protects you from anger, uh, negative thought forms, negative thought entities to a certain extent, to a certain extent, all right? But it protects you from anger and uh, elementals from an external environment. It can protect you, it gets stronger, right? You remember? 
uh, it gets stronger when, uh, uh, when the elementals are there, but it's very uh, sensitive and can rupture with anger expressed from inside. So when anger is coming from outside, it gets stronger. Anger coming from inside, it gets weaker. <laughs> okay, now, why is that? What happens to the composition when it comes from inside to outside, from outside to inside? No time to go ahead. Now, most importantly, one of the impacts of what the, what, what, um, what the, okay, we know that the, um, the chakra, the chakral web is, or the atomic web has the ability to heal itself. Because if you get angry, if a clever one looks, based on what I understand and what I heard, there is a small crack. You know, sometimes you shout, you're like, oh, there's some weird feeling here. That's a small crack or a hole because the energy has gone out. But if you don't get angry the next day or for a few hours, a few days, you go back to normal, you're going back to your work, the body will heal itself. The body will heal this hole and crack. It's only when you do it repeatedly over and over again that the rate of deterioration, the same thing like wounds, the rate of deterioration is more than the uh, ability of the body to heal itself. And then, of course, since that energy be being emitted out, it attracts, you know, just like if somebody, if your neighbor is cooking some really nice, tasty food, like, ah, what's that today? <laughs> you know, what are they cooking? So in the inner world, you're emitting anger energy. That anger energy, energy has smell and, and taste and everything. That's why you do, the, for those of you who don't know, you have the blue tongue, they get attracted, it's food for them. So that's why they get attracted. And they see free way in, so they come in to eat buffet. Uh, so, so why are we talking about that? Yeah, so it has the ability to heal itself. So we've looked at several good properties. From those properties, you can surmise where it comes from. But I'm going to go into detail. Most importantly, it's called an etheric web. <laughs> okay, Master, Master Cho has called it an etheric web. So I think there's a big clue what type of prana it's made of. <laughs> All right. So, um, but is that all that it's made of? So here, if you read it, there are two parts of it. One is the prana that circulates around it and one is the constituent, right? All right. So now for something to have an intelligence of its own, reactive to higher energies, all of that, I think that it's, uh, it, it comes from the soul energy, from the soul energy. All right. That's one level of truth. From the energy from the higher soul, the energy is continuously flowing and it, it circulates around these webs. But more than that, it's, it's out of context, so I can't explain more. But if you look at um, drug addicts, they are strongly influenced by elementals, chronic drug addicts. And the elementals have, uh, and their chakras have holes and crack. And if you scan them, their spiritual cord is very small. One of the, one of the most common things in almost all people with severe psychological problem is their spiritual cord is very small. And according to Master Cho, if you allow more divine energy to come in, yes, divine energy has a tendency to repair the holes and crack. But why does it have the tendency to repair the holes and crack? Do you understand? You want to, you have a hole. You want to, you have a hole in your sweater. You want to fix the hole. Do you use the same thread that the sweater is made of? Not always, right? But if you want a good fit, <laughs> right? You use, you use similar material. You use physical material, right? You use that material to repair it. So if you have a hole in a chakra web, what material will you use to repair it? Or what material does the body need to repair it? Anyway, it's a study session, so it's good to think on this. I think that's that. Okay, Alas. Right. Ah, last question, last one. <laughs> why do um, why do uh, people not, you know, why is it not good for people to have, um, you know, uh, experiences uh, with what is what do you call it? It's not preemptive, premature opening of the chakra webs. Number one, when you look, and this I've heard over and over again, when you look at something, the door is open both ways. <laughs> All right. When you look at a person's emotional body, you try and read the thought forms, you try and experience or see whatever energies are in the chakra, whatever emotion the person feels. You not only see the contents in picture form sometimes, depending on your degree of clairvoyancy, you actually experience the degree of emotion and it comes to you like yours. And if you're not properly developed, like we've discussed in the past two days, why, you know, the upper chakras and everything, if you're not properly developed, you're going to go crazy. You'll think it's your own energy. Ah, 
one. So, so that's why. So that's why Master Cho in the book Pranic Psychotherapy is stated here, when a psychic or clairvoyant focuses attention on neg negative entities, he will intensely experience, not just experience, but intensely experience emotionally and mentally the contents of these negative thought forms. Some of the clairvoyants who are prematurely awakened, their brain cannot even see the image yet because it's not that sensitive, but they're experiencing these emotions. They don't even realize it's not theirs. So that causes them to have psychological problems for no reason, <laughs> because it was not their psychological problem in the first place. Have you experienced some people who are too sensitive and you say something, they're like, oh, like excuse me, calm down. So, um, and you realize that the person is not making sense when they're talking about why they're upset in the first place. So, so that's why it's not good to prematurely awaken it. So, but if your upper chakras are very strong, if your uh, higher, um, higher chakras are controlling the lower chakras and the spiritual cord is big and you are, you know, your Kundalini is awakening, you're, you have some um, emotional mental stability, then you look, you have the ability to discern if it's yours or not. It's like a child going into a dark room versus an adult going into a dark room, provided you're not scared of the dark. <laughs> and, I, and I think one of the things is to start to understand yourself. And so when you do a lot of, uh, especially in Arhatic Yoga, inner reflection firm resolution, you recognize that these are your thoughts. You know, this is the way you're thinking about a person, about a situation. And because you are aware, you know that this kind of way of thinking is yours compared to something else that might happen. And this can happen when you, you know, meet friends, when you meet groups, uh, maybe even the office, you start getting influenced by their thoughts. And then you have to distinguish whether, hey, this is the way I really think, or, or is it the thought of someone else that I'm getting influenced by? And we all get influenced, yes. Um, I remember when I used to go to Sri Lanka to teach, um, you know, more than a decade ago, when I'd come back, I realized I was influenced by the accent. So when I would talk, I would start saying things the way they do. And then I catch myself like, oh my God, I'm talking just like them. But if I'm not aware, I probably continue to talk like that, right? So awareness helps you recognize whether this way of thinking is the way you are thinking or is it actually somebody else's that you picked up on. Now, there are good influences and there are bad influences, even in thoughts. So that's something we have to be aware of. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. But we're starting at seven o'clock with this. I told you, at least I made good time. <laughs> <laughs> you made good time. All right. So basically, we're going to study about the etheric body, the etheric double or the energy body with reference to birth and death. Yes. Uh, birth and death of the physical body, which is connected to, of course, the etheric body. So remember, going back to Master Cho's teachings, when they talk about, uh, except for this, uh, this, these books, uh, many of the books, when they talk about the physical body, they're talking about both the physical body, which you and I can touch, and the energy body that surrounds it. Esoteric books. Yes, they combine both together. But however, here, uh, just to continue. So it starts off with, it, um, it will now be useful to study the etheric double in its connection with birth and death of the physical body. So those of us who... Why will it be useful? Why is it useful? Today? Just for us to know how it's created and how it actually ultimately dies. Just like we know how we are created physically and how we die physically. So with reference to the... Yeah, but we body. want to know how we, uh, how we are created so we can create. Why do we need to know this? So you know how you were created <laughs> with an energy body. Just... <laughs> you must be trying to bug me, but I'm not getting it. Anyway, here goes. No psychic. So uh, those who... <laughs> <laughs> have studied the mechanism of reincarnation. So remember the chapter that we spoke about earlier. You and I understand that um, the etheric body, yes, there is certain factors that come into play. And so one of the things is they say a factor comes into play which does not operate in the case of the astral and mental. And for me, this was new, yes. Uh, so with reference to the astral and the mental bodies, this does not happen only with the etheric. Uh, body. And so they say the etheric double, double being because it's exactly like the physical body. And so it looks like a double or like a twin. And because it's is, the name of the book. The reason why it was the name of the book as well is actually built in advance. Yes, before the incarnated soul comes. And even before the physical body is created. I thought that was very new for me. I, I had no clue that this was actually created. And mm -hmm. so they say there is a elemental, right? Now, remember elemental, there is the elemental kingdom. And that kingdom, and there are these tiny little beings or devas that actually help create the physical form, the astral form, the mental form. And uh, so 
with reference to the etheric body now, very interesting. They say that there is this elemental who is basically a thought form. Now, this elemental is a thought form of these four Devarajas. And they are basically the ones that reside in the etheric subplanes of the physical matter, right? And so one of the four etheric subplanes of the physical matter is where these Devarajas are. And they're the ones who create this thought form. Now, interestingly, this thought form is actually that elemental that will help now create our etheric body or the etheric body of any uh, physical being that's coming into existence at this point. And so it says, the primary business of this is only to build the mold, the etheric mold, for the physical uh, particles of the new baby born that will be built. Yes. So repeating myself, the primary business of this building elemental, right? So this being, the only job for it is to build. And what does it build? Is to construct the etheric mold, yes, into which the physical particles, that means this physical form, yes, of the new baby to be born will be built. And so if the mold has a defect, then the physical form will also have a defect. It is like that uh, kids thing where you have all these dots and then you have to connect the dots and it becomes a form. <laughs> it is it like that. Okay. So I, I'll do two more paragraphs or do you want to talk about this? No, I have very little to talk about. It's not my specialization. So. But. <laughs> Sorry. Birth okay. and death is not my interest. It's not your interest. But I'll explain what I understand. Anything in the first paragraph? Uh, yeah, I'll connect the whole. Okay, so uh, when you're looking, um, the Devarajas. Okay, so basically, first of all, those who have studied the mechanism of reincarnation, the keyword is mechanism. Not many people know the mechanism of reincarnation, right? Um, so I have no idea what he's talking about. So basically, <laughs> you want a body, you want to have a baby, right? That is the effect, right? Now, it has to start from whatever has physical form, has to happen from the energy world and come down. Now, this principle of starting from subtle going into gross is called materialization. Materialization. So those of you who have studied Kriya Shakti, what you're doing is creating babies, right? You want a physical effect. You want a physical impact. So first you create a form, all right? And in this case, you use certain colors that are are on the lowest, the lowest frequency colors from the lowest frequency chakras of your body. You create it so it's heavy, so it'll materialize faster. All right. So your your um, you're basically doing. You have to understand that there's the concept of we've explained this so many times. As above, so below. Everything is based on the law of nature. So when you're doing kriya shakti, what you are doing is you are taking a subtle thought creating a mold around it, giving it energy and form over and over again till it becomes denser and denser and it drops into the physical world. Okay. Now, what are these four Devarajas? The four Devarajas, I think they're known by different things in different cultures. I think in Buddhism, they call the four heavenly kings or four something. There, there's the four, 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 many things. Now, each Devaraja, as far as I understand, and my knowledge is extremely limited, is in charge of like or one, one subplane or one, you can say, you know, some, like in, in certain cultures, they use e, north, east, you know, the four directions. But the point to understand is that each Devaraja has a certain component of energy, specialized in certain type of energy. So there's not only one type of etheric energy, there are several types of etheric energy that has to come together for these, uh, in different places for. So the brain requires some, uh, to create the brain with requires certain type of raw materials. The lower chakras might require, uh, and the lower organs might require certain materials. So the four Devarajas combine and create a thought form or a program. Which requires the matter from each of these four uh, planes. Just like yeah, you something. use certain chakras and things to create a thought form, four of them is like a combined Kriya Shakti, create a thought form or a program. Okay. So this one, uh, because you have to understand that their specialization is materialization. So Master would explain this and I don't remember 100%. But you have to understand, I thought it's made by God. That is true and that is not true. Actually, it's true and more true. <laughs> All right. Everything is made by God, but the Supreme being has people to help. Right. So you have uh, certain beings with certain specialization. All right. Now the beings that there are certain beings according to Master Chua that they don't do anything, but they keep materializing and maintaining the existence of the universe. 
So their specialization is materialization. There are certain beings that just generate tremendous amount of energy and channel them towards the earth, remember? Yeah, that must so, have say that. So there is tremendous diff different beings have different purposes. Now with these Devrajas, they're creating a mold or the thought form to do it. Now we, how that happens in Achieving Oneness, we talk about uh, the Achieving Oneness book by Master Cho, we talk about the seed having the design, but that is just a design. What are you going to do with a blueprint if you don't have workers, if you don't have people? Where are you going to get all the other stuff? <laughs> right? <laughs> all right. So, um, because until the body has a, ten, uh, has a chance, there's no body. So, how will the body heal itself or regenerate if there's no body in the first place? What makes that body from zero to the part till the, till the um, point is reached where the body can take over and heal itself and regenerate and do all these things? right? Who's going to make the first batch? Okay. So that is something. So just to give you an idea of the Devrajas, oh, it's not here. The presentation is, um, you have to close this. Yeah. Just close this. It's the old one. It's chapter 14. Okay, so um, this is in the, oh, why is your, uh, I wrote it properly, it just came like this, I don't know. Uh, we are told that they are agents in the administration. It's so funny, it's called administration of karma. It's literally like a department. <laughs> ah, this is materialization department, please go there. <laughs> okay, there are four, really seven, because there are seven layers. Great rulers who are known as the Devraja or regions of the earth. Each one of them is at the head of a certain vast group of Devas and nature spirits. Obviously, they're just creating the thought form. They need some people to take the action plan, you know, workers, construction workers, uh, builders, you know, all the manual labor has to be done by the devas and the nature spirit and even of the elemental essence. Okay. And uh, now suppose that an etheric body is about to be formed for an ego. No. No. Okay. Um, anyway, this is what. Um, so if you look at the second part, um, the, a country has a national government, state government, and city government. There is, an, there is a hierarchy of governments. Likewise, there, is, are, there are different levels of manifestation of the Supreme God. Okay, so just like you have different set, you have from the Supreme God, there are, we are also trying to become channels of peace. When we do the twin hearts, we are trying to become one of the sub governments. <laughs> Right. So if you have a complaint, you don't go complain to the prime minister of India. You might go to your local corporator or your, your, your local mayor. Right. And if then you escalate the issue, <laughs> so you don't go directly to the big boss. Okay. You go to the agents of the big boss. So it's the same system. All right. Right. Uh, so, so to continue, so we have these uh, Devarajas and uh, they come from the different four etheric subplanes. Now they haven't told us which exact uh, plane subplanes, but they definitely are part of this. It's it's like so each one is one. Yeah, each, each one is one. They so from they four give... of the subplanes. Uh, so for me, it's like building a house, right? And you need to have an architect. You need to have um, a person who helps you with your electricals, with your plumbing. So different people different groups will come to take care of building that entire house, right? But they all have to be there. If they're not together, then, you know, you don't know where the switch is going to be and where they're going to put the hole for the, for, uh, the electrical work. So everything has to come together and these, these four come together. Now let's continue with the form and the color of these uh, beings. So they say the form and the color of this elemental vary in different cases. So this being varies in different cases. The first is accurately expressed in the shape and size the infant is to be built, right? So uh, the first is accurately expressed in the shape and size the infant body is to be built. Clairvoyantly, this is seen- It has to be. It has to build. sorry. And this is clairvoyantly seen like a doll-like figure that floats around the mother and at some point actually enters her womb. So the mold is ready before the, the, the physical form is to be created, correct? And, but that is based on what actually comes in what we call the physical permanency. So let's move on. So they have to build this infant body and this hovers till it ultimately goes into the mother's womb. And uh, there are times that people have mistaken this, uh, this, this shape uh, to be the soul of the baby, but it's not. So moving on. 
So as soon as the fetus has grown to the size of that mold that was initially created, which is inside the mother's womb, correct? Then that mold has done its work. And so it, the, the next, next line, it talks about then comes the unfolding of the next level of that mold, correct? So the initial mold is based on the, uh, the fetus that is being growing within the mother's womb. There are no Till colors, it's just color, colorless almost. Like uh, if you look at a person, it's like almost vague. Uh, because there's no thought forms or quality or energy or anything, right? It's like a ghost. Like a ghost. <laughs> it's like just a big uh, uh, yeah. shape. You know, it's like on a hot day, those heat things. It's like something like, like, like a mirage kind of thing. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. So once this mold is within the mother's womb and the baby, yes, the fetus that has grown and is to be delivered, Till that point, that mold is good enough. Now, as soon as that baby has come out of the mother's womb, then it moves into the, or not moves actually, it unfolds into the next mold. And this is the next mold. Uh, the shape and size <coughs> continues basically for that child to grow. Now, it actually talks about a little later that this depends on the, the qualities of that baby being grown within the mother's womb. Once it's delivered, it needs to have certain qualities. Remember, even Amit mentioned earlier that your little babies, your little son, your little daughter that you've had, you'll notice that even at a very, very young age of a couple of months, you notice that they have certain tendencies. Yes, they could be uh, sometimes very aggressive. <laughs> sometimes you'll notice that they're super quiet. Uh, you'll notice that they're very affectionate already. So there are already tendencies within that. And so these tendencies, which have to influence that form, uh, are already part of this mold that is occurring. Right. And so it continues to say this continues to unfold. The second part continues to unfold. And the shape and size and condition of the body as it is, to be so far that uh, it starts to work to create, sorry, so far as the work of the elemental is concerned, at the time when it proposes to leave, right? So once that, that unfolding has happened and it's done all its work, then it tends to retire, right? Retire basically means that it actually, in the next paragraph, it will talk about it, it actually disintegrates. Because it does not have any more energy, any more power to continue to keep all its particles together. Once it's done its work of the mold, unfolding the mold to the maximum that it can, it just disintegrates. And then the incarnated soul that is now taking care of this body then takes the step forward with reference to the shape, the form and other things that need to be done for the baby. We have 23 baby. new messages. Are you guys asking questions or something like that? <laughs> Anyway. Do you want me to continue? Please. <laughs> I can see Amit is really... <laughs> All right, anyway. So uh, the size of the mold... Because they're going on and on about a simple thought form that materializes and then the body uses the seed to make the stuff and then the etheric matter of the mother is used and that's that. Hmm. It's a simple thing. I know it's a simple thing, but okay, we have to go study ahead. this. You know, study. <laughs> right? So going back to the mold. So it says here that it unfolds and uh, it further grows. However, I'd like to go to the next. I'm going to jump to the next one. So it says, in both cases, the this being, yes, uses itself as a mold. So remember, there is no other, but it is itself, that, that thought form that these Devarajas created. That ah, is Kriya the... Shakti, I told you. So that is the mold that is now, which was hovering over that goes into the mother's womb and within it comes the physical form of the baby and then unfolds till it's required. Now, when is it required? So this is what I was talking about. So it continues to, um, you know, continues to help with this form, but it, if the baby that is growing has, uh, you know, very few qualities that are required to be put into it, then the, the elemental or this being leaves much earlier. But they say if there are so-called other qualities, I think the word limitation was mentioned. Where is that now? Have I lost it? Okay. 
its colors largely represent the qualities required in the body to fit the form also is usually that testing. Okay, I think I've missed something somewhere. Anyway, so uh, to go on to the next paragraph, in both these cases, the elemental uses itself as a mold. Its colors largely represent the qualities required by the body it has to build. And its form is usually uh, that which is already destined, which means it's part of what we call the permanent seed. And as soon as it, its work is done, uh, there is no power left to hold together its particles, which I mentioned, and it disintegrates. Now, interestingly, the quality of this um, etheric matter depends on two types of energies. So uh, they talk about the type of matter and the quality of matter, right? So they talk about one being vertical and one being horizontal. So the type of matter is what they talk about being in the vertical division and the quality of matter being on the horizontal division. Now, they talk about the first type uh, purely connected with uh, what you and I would call uh, what's in the physical permanent seed as the type or subtype that has to come in, right? And the second one is with reference to karma. And so say, for example, um, you want rice, you could get rice from India, you could get rice from Thailand, you could get rice from Japan, but there are different grades in that. Yes, so you could get rice in India for uh, 20 rupees, you could get rice for 120 rupees, right? The same thing with uh, rice, whether you want Japanese or whether Koshikari. you want, yeah, whether you want Koshikari. <laughs> He's talking about the different types of rice. Or you want from Thailand or from China or whatever. So there are different types. So that is another way of looking at it. So the type means maybe you want to be born as a Chinese, you could be born as a Japanese person, a person who's from Thailand or an Indian. But then the quality of that energy that you have depends on your karmas. So the kind of person you were in your past determines the kind of quality of energy that you will have today. Yes, will it be more subtle? Will it be more gross? The qualities that you will have, are you going to be a more aggressive person? Are you going to be a very loving person? Are you going to be someone who's super lazy or super energetic? All these qualities have to be built into the system. And of course, the astral body comes into play with some of these because they are emotional re related. So moving on. So the first type is with reference to the rays. Yes. So you are a certain ray. So you're very, very determined. You're ray one, right? You're very, very loving. You're ray two. And so you're, you're someone who's more into detail. So that's something like ray three. And the second part is the karmas. So your permanent seed has, yes, the type of person you're going to be right? That means, am I going to be born as an Indian? As a, am I going to be born as a girl, as a boy? Which part of India? Which family am I going to be connected to? And in connection to those comes the second aspect, which is a karma. So the karma when you and I are born, which is in that physical permanency, is not just your karma. You, the jivatma that is born, it's not just your karma that is interwoven into the seed. Yes, into this plan for you to be born. It's also your family that you're connected to. It's also your country that you're connected to. Yes, so all those play a vital role in what you are destined to do this lifetime. Whether you're going to be a teacher, an engineer, or doctor, an RJ, it doesn't matter. It's all part of what the plan is, most probably for all of us. Right, and so it says, the building elemental being charged with this, it de it's then given this plan saying, okay, fine, this is the plan, now go and build, <laughs> right? And so it has to take this plan and start to produce the kind of form that is required for the physical body, right? And so it's charged with the production of the type of physical body suited to the man's requirement. The elemental, which is the being, in fact, consists of that portion of the karma of the individual which is to express itself in the physical form. Uh, and then they give you examples here of people being um, energetic, lethargic, sensitive, unresponsive. And so the uh, potentialities of hereditary is also something that is taken into consideration. Are latent, and so if you are supposed to be, say for example, an amazing singer, then that quality that is required to be an amazing singer has to be in the DNA of either the mother or the father. So it's either, like they mentioned here, in the maternal ovum or the paternal sperm. It has to be within the DNA of your father and mother because that is where the matter comes from as well. And so through bringing that into 
the jivatma, she or he will then be given that vocal cord, which is required, you know, that high quality vocal cord and also the ears to be able to hear music and understand and then actually produce the sounds that are required. Yes, there are many people who want to sing, but you realize you try after some time and you realize you're not going anywhere close to being professional at all, right? Because we don't have the raw materials to, uh, to build that kind of vocal cords that are required. Would you like to go ahead? I think we should stop there. No, I'll talk about it. Then we should stop because yeah. then you're going into. Okay, you spoke a lot, man. Hey, you said you don't have much to say. I don't have much to say. What she said. Um, okay, so at the end of the first page, uh, this is Elemental is retired um, for all further group until. Uh, and further growth of the body is under the control of the ego himself, not necessarily the the uh, the higher soul, but also you have to understand from the uh, also from the um, chakral development is sufficient enough to heal itself after that or to create after that to create new cells, because the body needs to have its own power source to be able to create new cells, right? You want to create something, you need power. So the elemental will have to help until you have the ability to have your own various energy centers and power sources so you can, you can heal yourself, all right? That's what I think it is. Then it talks about uh, required for the body, blah, blah, blah. It colors represents qualities of the required to build and its form is also usually that's destined for it. Uh, as soon as its work is done, there's no power left to hold together its particles and the elemental disintegrates. This gives you a, a big um, uh, hint that it's a thought form. Okay, because when you look at a Kriya Shakti a thought form, uh, and the question is, what, what power is left? And where does the power go? Do you understand? It says, um, as, as its work is done, there is no power left. That means it came with some power, and that power has been discharged. So what power is that and what discharge has been done? All right. So the power is something that holds together its particles, in other words, uh, and the energy, uh, and it's the energy that provides the baby to produce the form. Do you understand? So it's like literally like Kriya Shakti. It's literally like certain aspects of Kriya Shakti later on in the class that you study about something. You know, you create something which you're not supposed to name, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, <laughs> he who shall not be named. All right, so in determining the quality of etheric matter to be used in building the etheric body, we have two things to consider. Okay, this I'm just going to skip this whole thing. All right, now, when it says a permanent atom which has a type and subtype impressed on it, you have to understand what does it mean by this and what is it talking about this whole, you see, it says type of the physical body suited to the man's requirements. What is that? What requirements are you talking about? Height, weight, or what? Right? And um, then it talks about on the selection made by the building elementals. For example, whether the body will be naturally clever or stupid, uh, irritable, energetic, lethargic, sensitive, or unresponsive. I thought that has to do with astral. I thought it has to do with mental. What's it got to do with etheric? Do you understand, what I'm, do you understand the question? Which I will hopefully answer. Right, so that is that is what the whole idea is. Okay, now, so when you're about to incarnate, there are two, three, there are a couple of aspects. Okay, number one, you have the destiny aspect. If you've studied or read the book Achieving Oneness with a Higher Soul, you realize that you don't incarnate. If uh, if you've gone on vacation, I'm sure all of you have, not during this year, but previously, <laughs> you've recalled your vacation. When you go on holiday. You obviously, right, are going to plan your holiday, right? You don't say, okay, where are you going to go? I don't know. I'm just going to go to the airport. I'll see what flies there. I'm going to go there. Okay, what are you going to do there? I don't know. I'll just land there and I'll see where are you going to stay. I have no idea, right? Normally, you plan your vacation almost to an extent that sometimes some people over plan their vacation. You know, they want to wake up at three in the morning, go for this uh, tourist site and go here, see the sunrise, see the sunset. And then you need a vacation from the vacation because it's over planned already, right? So, so if you have to plan something as simple as a vacation, you being a, divine, a being of divine intelligence, do you not think you will make a plan before you come there? <laughs> so the higher soul, it doesn't happen that way, but 
an analogy. One high soul tells the other, where one. What are you going to do? You're going? Yeah, I'm going. What are you going to do? I don't know. I'm going to drop, see where I land, and see what happens. <laughs> That's not going to happen, right? That's not very evolutionary. <laughs> okay. So you have to have a, a spiritual advisor, and we're going to skip all that talk because we're running out of time. But basically, you have to have a purpose. Now, say you want to have a purpose. Say you're in school. You want to become a doctor. You want to become a lawyer. Do you look for a place or a body or a, uh, or a college where you can accomplish that purpose, uh, wh where it's most likely for you to accomplish that purpose? Say, I want to become a lawyer. You start looking at all the various law schools. Which one is the best for me as I feel would, you know, um, help me develop the qualities that I wish to develop? So same thing. That's what Sumi is saying. So you have the, 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 the higher soul has a ray but it also has a sub-ray. Now the incarnated soul also has a ray and a sub-ray. Now this is where the qualities come in. So it's not really mental astral energy. It is the type of body you have. The type of body you have. For example, so the first aspect about the rays, you know, building a body based on the ray, is the configuration, and that will tell you whether a body is going to be more sensitive or less sensitive. Like for example, Masa Choa, the founder of pranic healing he was his body was not sensitive right he would say ah these things uh, i have no idea that happens you know people would see him here and there and be like i have no idea but i can explain to you the principle behind it <laughs> right but he's like my body is not sensitive i cannot feel it and then he explained he's like look my purpose here is to move mountains <laughs> remove obstacles spread the work you can't expect a person to do that, to have a very sensitive body, because the moment he comes an obstacle, he'll become too emotional. So you're talking about the receiver. You remember you have two aspects, the astral and the nervous system and the receiving aspect, the receiving component. So the body, each person's body is built in a different way. You know, some people, they have a high pain tolerance. You keep beating them, nothing happens. Ah. Okay, some people have a low, low pain tolerance. You just have to like, ah! What, I barely touched. I saw it, it's recorded. Okay, yes, so, 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 so the more sensitive body, less sensitive body, right? So the body, it's not an astral emotion. It is the receiving aspect. So how clever or stupid, depending on the etheric vehicle, has to be reconfigured in a way that it becomes willful to manifest basically your destiny. Now, if your destiny is for you to become a person like a director of a company or you're supposed to become prime minister, Good destiny, right? You're supposed to become a, maybe a figurehead to help start something new, to break new ground, to open humanity to new horizon. You cannot be born in a very sensitive body. You have to be born in a very, you know, you have to have thick skin so that when people get upset with you, when you try and do something, you have income resistance, instead of getting affected, you start to think of other ways. So there are some people you notice that you have, do, you've been doing meditation, I was doing meditation. I don't sense anything. Other person like, I went here, I went to a tunnel, I went this and that. I just got, I'm like, what? And I read what they're talking about. So I know it's not imagination. Uh, and just half an hour ago, I've explained to them what heart chakra and crown chakra is. <laughs> and half an hour later, they've already surpassed my meditation and spiritual experiences. So that's why Master Chua says, your spiritual experience is not a gauge of your degree of evolution or your spiritual development it is just saying it is just a it's just that you're born in a sensitive body okay that's why different bodies they had different types like for example the first root race second root race all that are different bodies for different functions okay so that is the whole idea behind the whole karma aspect now the next question is this now then of course the other part based on the karma based on the karma Obviously, uh, if a person is born defective, they have to have the karma for the person to be born defective. Some people say it's God's will. You have to think about that. Uh, can, can it be God's will? Maybe. But then how can it be so arbitrary? There has to be a deciding factor. You know, how can everything just be God's will? You're born blind. That's God's will. Okay, that is good. That's a good way of processing. But how, if you think about it, how can it be God's will? If God is supposed to be our father and mother are our, our, our parents all loving and all loving all merciful how can it be god's will okay so that it's be like this god's will i like you i like you i don't care blind i like you i like you no legs no legs i like you i like you no teeth bad teeth <laughs> so you know it cannot be how can you say god is all loving and all merciful if it's so arbitrary there has to be a reason why a person is born in a certain way 
Now, second aspect is uh, why do, does the body have to feel pain? Why does the body have to experience uh, pain and all that stuff? Why can't we just skip that part? Life would be simple, right? So Master Joe would explain like this. He says the body is designed in such a way, this part, that you, the tenant of the body or the soul, if you do not live, if you do not, ha or if you have not lived in harmony with certain laws of nature, so maybe in this incarnation, you're eating junk food, whatever, not in harmony with nature or in the previous past. If you break the law of karma, if you break the yama niyama, since you guys mentioned it, it is designed in such a way that your body will have lots of pain. <laughs> and you, the soul, will also experience the brain uh, pain through the bodies. Okay? It's not only physical. It is, according to Master Chua, a feedback mechanism to tell you that you are no longer in harmony with nature. Okay? That you are not... Um, in uh, uh, har no longer in harmony with the law of karma and the golden rule, all right? And that you are no, no longer in harmony with the virtues, okay? It's basically a fire alarm, okay? So that's why you would say, follow the teachings, your life will be easy. <laughs> Correct, right? and, and that's why we always go back, right? A lot of us recognize that these things are happening because uh, we've done something in our past to ourselves or to someone else, and that's what we've, we're... we're going through right now right or suffering happens because of cause and effect that is the law of karma yes uh, so i think uh, what we'll do is we pass time uh, there are a lot of questions ah, I don't really? know if we, yeah i don't know if we have the time um, so one person has said the quality of the protective web is directly proportional to uh, the size of uh, the spiritual cord that's a question no it's not yeah your spiritual cord could be even bigger than your physical form bigger than your physical body yeah so it could be bigger than this but your etheric web is not uh, proportionately increasing in size though the chakra might depending on the chakra the web might increase but not necessarily but, always uh, on the spiritual. but at the same time the tensile strength of the web is proportionate to the spiritual energy that's what i've observed yes yeah, so you've got to remember that yes as the spiritual cord increases there's more downpour of energy through and then you have all these chakras coming right from the center so they do become bigger but is it exactly the same proportion no, no it's not directly proportional to the size yeah but it's directly proportional to a certain extent to the strength and the quality of the web that's yeah. why if you're very uh, you've been meditating a long time if you notice you can go to people they tell you their problems you're to a certain extent okay but if that happened 10 years back, you'd be like, ah, I'm, or, you know, you'd run away from the person. Your attitude changes. So it's not only chakral development, it's also the ability of the uh, protective web. The composition starts to change. So your, your aura will also become bigger, not just your chakras. Uh, your aura will also become bigger, which will then uh, allow you to be able to handle and do a lot more than you did before. Nothing before, that's why I didn't that carry over this one? Okay. Yeah. Um, so... All right. Okay. Sorry. Then I skipped. Go ahead. Here. That's it. Here. Do psychic cords cause holes and cracks? No, they don't cause holes and cracks. <laughs> but when you pull them out, you could call, cause a tear. And that's why Masa says to use gold at that point. Yeah. Because they don't go that deep. The etheric web will not allow it to inter penetrate the, especially if it's negative, it doesn't allow, but it's just towards the surface, but the root might be going in. <laughs> no, uh, when uh, I think uh, Kiran, you're asking if when you remove the negative elementals, will good elementals come? No, you just remove the negative and then anything that's good will pass through. Yeah. And, and you repair the web. Yeah. And you just repair it to make it stronger and go ahead. But there are good elementals. It's, it's good for it to be empty as well. Without any thought forms, without any elementals on the web is, is actually good. Okay, no I'm problem. coming across a number of teenagers and young adults, even children who are super sensitive to energy and are coming with psychological problem. In all cases, it's not possible for them to learn pranic healing. How can we help in such case beyond healing? They're basically oversensitized and their mental body is not capable enough to process the emotional uh, stimulus. So I would suggest uh, a combination of meditation on twin hearts so that they don't react negatively. You have to check the size of their heart chakra uh, to make sure that it's bigger than the solar. If not, they have to do twin hearts. Uh, because the way it's explained sometimes, 
the oversensitivity could be experienced with the heart, which is good, right? Which is good. Like, ah, I have been in love. Mm-hmm. But the oversensitivity, the other part could be experienced through the solar plexus. So by determining which one is in control, you can, uh, you can prescribe a proper solution, uh, energetically speaking. So you can do twin hearts combined with activating the ajna and throat, the mental body, so they process faster. But usually the kids today, they're actually... Um, quite uh, mentally capable it's just that the exercise aspect is not done uh, they're not you see in my experience oh we don't have time for this but generally if you see when we were young i mean if your body is now in your 30s when you were young younger uh, or you were a kid you realize that uh, we would interact with people almost on a daily basis you know and uh, we developed a skin uh, you know we would insult people i knew you know when i used to come to bombay people say you're an idiot you're an idiot you're an ass you're an ass you're this you're that and then we forget about it and go move on with our life and go you know next time you know next day we meet okay it's reset then after some time the but but you see and then we would be very sensitive so if the security guard is coming we're like oh that guy's coming uh, or if somebody's in not in a good mood you would be able to observe their sort of expression, say, okay, this is not the right time to approach them. So you had a lot of interaction. But now when people are mostly on the phone, when people are mostly on the phone over and over again, um, you can pretend to be whoever you want to be. Because when you're meeting someone physically, you may not pretend <laughs> that much. But on the phone, you can just delete. Now you can even delete the message before they can see. So you can, uh, you see, the people don't get emotional input as much as they used to. Now, some of it is good, but one of the side effects I've noticed, energetically speaking, is that you just tell them one thing, like, oh, uh, blah, blah, blah. They'll be like, oh, you said that to me, oh my God, you know? Uh, but then you look at them, you're like, I didn't even say much. I went through like 100 times worse, and you know, <laughs> these guys are freaking out over nothing. So, um, so it is the quality of the emotional body. So at one aspect, yes, they are, they are highly... Uh, they're more evolved to a certain extent because their emotional body is bigger and mental body is more developed. But at the same time, the proper training is not given for the emotional and mental body. So that has to be done slowly. And if you look at it, most of the, most of the subjects in school are all mental subjects. They're not emotional subjects. So even in school, they don't really get so much training. All right. So Rahul, we had looked at uh, Swacha. Uh, or so oh, I already says, explained so, you. Yeah, Swacha, um, the purity aspect uh, was spoken about in the beginning of the class, in case you missed it at that point, right? Um, okay. Now, uh, the yes, Dr. Sagar, so the etheric uh, mold does come before the physical form, which even I didn't know. And uh, um, Kala, maybe uh, Nalvar, because Nal means four, uh, could be what it, it is in there Tamil. many, many yeah. cultures. So we're not sure if it's the exact, exact same, but definitely referring to four beings. Uh, soul and spirit. Uh, soul and spirit with reference to Christianity, the soul is usually the higher soul. The spirit is the incarnated soul. So it really depends in context. If you take it out of context, it may not make sense. But this is one, uh, one reference. So you have... Uh, yeah, so when they say, in a different context, when they say you have a body, soul, and spirit, then the body is uh, your incarnated soul or the jivatma. The soul is the atma. And here the spirit is very different. Here the spirit is actually the paramatma or your divine spark. So it really rep- it depends on context. Just uh, on and off, it becomes a little difficult. I don't think devrajas are archangels. Yeah, correct. Those are different. Um, yeah. Which language I use at home? I use English because we have... Kijri everywhere in our family. We do uh, no, there's that, this particular question. Which we have. Uh, if you're advancing spiritually, how does it affect your family, especially if they are not on the spiritual path? Though they accept that there is some higher power, does it lead to friction? Should one slow down one's spiritual practice? This is a very long answer. It has nothing to do with the etheric double. But one of the things you can do is, if you are <clears throat> practicing regularly and family members are there, scan their chakras, yes, before you started the work, and I've started your spiritual work I'm talking about, and scan it now. So even if they aren't on the spiritual path, your energy or the work you're doing spiritually affects them. Even house help. Yes, it could be uh, the lady who comes to clean the house. It could be your nanny. It could be a driver. It could be anybody. It actually affects them. 
right? And sometimes because you're connected to them. Yeah, you are. But, but the problem is sometimes your energy is so much they can't handle it. So you'll notice they leave in a few years or in some cases in, in a couple of months they leave because they can't handle you. Yes, so, you can't handle the energy. That but if you're advancing spiritually, you have to understand that you're going here, they're staying here. You can't expect them to be here. You have to come down to their level. You have to practice loving kindness. You have to practice patience, tolerance. Otherwise, you know, many times I've seen Arhatik Yogis judging people because they are not meeting their standards of uh, virtues or whatever is that. But you see, they're not the ones who've changed. You have decided to spiritually evolve. All the more reason for you to adjust to them. And number two, this has got to do with the principle of insolment, where you have also the amount of spiritual energy coming into the family, and then you have family karma, and then you have the family spiritual core also. And I, this is not a menu to talk about this. Correct. Now, uh, Balachandra, when you talk about, uh, you know, whether you are placed... Sorry. So, um, how do we understand whether you're placed in the wrong place or wrong work? Is it part of karma? Yes. You might feel that this is the wrong family I am in, or when you go to the workplace and say, this is not what I should be doing, uh, then it is definitely karma. Why are you placed in that? And sometimes, for example, family, you can't change your family now. You've chosen them. There is a reason you chose them. Even though they're the most difficult, it's almost like, how can this person be my father or my mother or my brother or my sister? You can't understand that. But it is a reason why you're there to learn certain lessons with them, yeah. based on your past with them. Maybe the same souls or maybe some similar soul. And so you have lessons to learn from them. Very tough lessons, obviously, if life is so difficult at, at this point. Uh, so it could be a mother who's, who doesn't show any affection or love. It could be a father who's like a lieutenant at home, you know, super strict. And, there's, and so what you need as a child, even growing up, sometimes you get deprived of. Now, you've got to remember, if you're deprived of that, then you have deprived someone of that in your past. And that's what you're experiencing now to recognize how it is when you do not do certain things for a person, what happens to them. So you're experiencing what you did to another person today. One and sometimes the soul doesn't learn it that easily, you know, although the laws of karma are trying their best. So sometimes some people have actually come, I've noticed that they're talking about how badly their parents treated them, blah, blah, blah. And then I notice how they're treating their children is the same way. <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't realize they're shouting at their kids the same way. They're like, I'm like, uh, I think uh, you need to, uh, you know, observe this. But you can't tell them directly because obviously they'll get affected. Now, this has to do again with family karma and hatred binding souls, love binding souls. And there are different factors. And this becomes like a one hour talk on its own. Um, yeah, this can go on and on and on. Yeah. It's a good talk, but it's not uh, part of this session's um, yeah, we, okay, done. Uh, yeah, closing we hope we've uh, answered most of your questions. If you've gotten anybody, please uh, remember, uh, we'll do Let's our last session this for this week on Friday. Uh, Shriram said he's going to be having a session on Friday. So we will try and finish a little before um, 7.30. So you can join his session at 7.30. Yeah. All right. Close your eyes. Connect time to the palate, to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother. To our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chokotsu, Lord Mahagaruji Mailing, all the great ones, all the invisible and spiritual helpers. To all the great teachers of theosophy, the great masters, the beings present, the beings of knowledge, light, and power, the angels and beings of communication, our respective Wi Fi's, to our soul and divine self, we thank you for your great, great blessings, for your tremendous patience with us. Thank you for the deeper, clearer understanding of these teachings and for helping us assimilate this properly, effectively. Thank you, and in full faith, with gratitude, respect, and love, we thank you. Thank you, everybody. Namaste. Enjoy. We'll see you on Friday for um, birth and death, and then we'll take a break for next week. Yeah? So, see you. Bye. On Friday. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye. Take care.